feet probably appropriate of what I thought. Oh, moves over. Oh, there's no way. What is this, bro? Goodness. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't we used to call the EuroLeague soft? That they couldn't handle the physicality of the NBA? I mean, isn't that why people literally didn't believe in Luka when he was getting drafted? Yes, the NBA is no longer the toughest league. It's the offensive league. It's why Dame was saying it's hard to score in FIBA. Because the best scorers in the NBA score from three and get fouled. In FIBA, not as many foul calls, just more physical. Help me! It's why Team USA was struggling because what the NBA has become is far away from what basketball actually is. Foul hunting is a skill, initiating contact is a skill, but when the game becomes about doing that and more about how to draw fouls and exaggerate the contact by doing unnatural motions like hooking defenders, that's when the game is ruined. Like, what, what am I even watching? Here's a chart. As three-pointers have become a higher percentage of total shots attempted, the free throw to shot ratio has just leveled out, which means that per drive, there are more free throws. Even Curry in 2019 said that the rule changes give perimeter guys a lot more freedom. The NBA allowed players to have more freedom of movement. Defenders weren't allowed to get in the way of offensive players getting to their spots, which is really counterintuitive because how are defenders supposed to stop players if they're not allowed to stop players? Ooh. The NBA is finally addressing these concerns, and it's a lot more important than you think that the media has been showing it could save the NBA. What is up, dudes, to that spawners players? It's your boy MJ. Most of y'all not even subscribed, so please subscribe! The comment about saving the NBA is not even an exaggeration. First, let's talk about the rule changes though. So here are the rule changes. Now all the following are either not going to be called or going to be offensive foul. The shooter launches or leans into a defender at abnormal angle. The offensive player abruptly veers off his path, sideways or backwards, into a defender. I'm looking at you, Trey Young. The shooter kicks his leg up or to his side at an abnormal angle. The offensive player's off-arm hooks the defender, often in the process of attempting a shot, in a non-basketball manner. We all know who this one's targeting. I think that the most important focus of these rule changes is to punish unnatural or non-basketball moves by offensive players. I mean, hooking players isn't really to help you get your shot off. Trey and Harden are gonna be mad. No more of this or this. I mean, what is this? That takes no skill at all. <laughs> and look, if you want to edit Trey Young making defenders annoyed by foul hunting, oh my goodness. You can too with the sponsor of today's video, Femora Go. Femora Go is a mobile editing app that is great for starting out, especially for YouTube and TikTok. They give you glitch effects, text, filters, thousands of stickers, the ability to keyframe and track all within the app. You can even change horizontal video to vertical video, which saves a ton of time when you want to share content on YouTube, TikTok, multiple platforms. Whatever content that you do want to share, Trey Young. I can put you in What's up? What the f What is that? They even have a bunch of preset templates to help you quickly put together higher level videos. So go click the link in the description, download for more go, cause it's free. And then comment what you think of the app using the hashtag create with Fomora Go. And Fomora Go is going to choose one of the comments down below to win a one year free license. You can help the channel out and get a chance to win all their pro tools. It's literally a win win. NB viewership has steadily went down and down and down season after season. Except this year because it's higher than the bubble, which I would hope so. The NBA was hilarious though. They were like, oh look, it's a 33% increase compared to last year. Your last year competition is a bubble where the audience and the crowd were screens. Bruh. Compared to 2019, it's a 25% dip. And there's a lot of reasons why viewership is down for the NBA. A lot of them doing with their platform just not being good to watch games. It's confusing. You have to get an NBA TV subscription, but at the same time get League Pass. Then you can't watch certain games on television, so you have to have a TV. So it's, it's a lot for a lot of people. But there's also the regular season not meaning as much or just not being exciting to casual fans. There is no metric that is good. In fact, the younger demographic, the COVID demographic for most 
companies, the NBA is lost by over 33%. And so the NBA is going to lose a lot of money if they don't fix this situation. I also got a gaming channel that I'm going to be posting on once 2K comes out, if 2K actually comes out. And it's going to be regular since I don't got college anymore. So you might as well check it out before the season starts and giveaways on there too. So yeah, the NBA introduced freedom of movement rules in 2018 and the viewership tanked. These rule changes right now are an attempt to fix what those kind of ruined and to get the NBA more in line with what the Olympics showed us. People enjoyed FIBA basketball way more. I know I did. FIBA doesn't have offensive players foul hunting or trying to initiate contact, doing unnatural basketball moves and getting away with it, complaining to the officials. Nah, rather than the complaining culture that exists, it's just hard in physical basketball. I want to say this though, we can't really be mad at the players for doing what it takes to win because they're trying to win. And so if jumping backwards into the defender or hooking players was getting them foul calls and getting them easy buckets, why, why would they not do it? It was up to the NBA and the officiating to stop this nonsense, but they didn't. Now they're finally trying to do it. These rules mainly prevent shooters from getting fouled on jump shots that they shouldn't get fouled on, or really the drives, right? Like when people are in pick and rolls and they can just sort of bump into a defender around them and get a foul call, that's what this is preventing. It does get us closer to FIBA officiating and just normal basketball. So when old heads are saying it was hard to score, they're more talking about the fact that there legit wasn't any spacing because players really couldn't shoot the three that well, and there weren't five players on the court that could all shoot the three. And then you combine that with the freedom of movement rules in 2018, and there's literally no, I don't even know how defenders could defend. As a result of these rule changes right now, defenders may actually be able to defend and spacing may change because there may be more successful one-on-one -on -one defense, which eliminates a lot of situations where there was help and rotation, which sets defense back. And perhaps the most important point defense will actually be rewarded. Like, defenders won't feel helpless all the time. Like, remember when LeBron has hands behind his back because he couldn't do anything without getting a foul? I am having a very bad day. That's what officiating has become because defenders legit don't feel like they can do anything or initiate any sort of contact because it will get called as a foul. Maybe now defense will actually be focused on and players will focus on defense because offensive players won't get bailed out with foul calls. Which leads me to pick and rolls. The pick and roll is the most used play in the NBA, but now pick and rolls aren't just an easy way to get fouled. Stars will still thrive, do not get me wrong, because I mean, why would they not? They'll just do it differently. More floaters, more actual ring of defense. Heck, the mid-range might be back because you can't just bump into a defender and get a foul call. You might actually have to take a shot in open space. Wow! And if perimeter play is being sort of hampered and drives are sort of being nerfed, then big men may thrive. Usually rules since 2004 have only helped perimeter players removing hand checking, freedom of movement. And when the NBA has instated these rule changes, perimeter play has thrived. Like when they removed hand checking, Steve Nash won back to back MVPs. But if perimeter play is sort of getting a nerf, then teams may look to big men who can score sometimes more efficiently and more in the post closer to the rim. These rule changes are not getting talked about enough, especially when you consider the fact that the NBA viewership is drastically low. And especially when it changes how offensive players are going to play offense. Watch, watch him. He's just going to lay on top of him. That takes no skill at all. <laughs> I think that the rule changes are going to make the game more enjoyable for a lot of people, and it's going to help bring viewership up. But the NBA has to do a lot more to get people to actually watch the game, including promoting young stars. It's a whole plethora of things they got to do. But I'm just glad that we're moving more towards normal basketball. But what do you think? How is this going to impact the stars of today and which stars are going to thrive and not do so well? Shout out to Famorgo for sponsoring this video. They got a really cool app for editing and you help the channel out by checking them out. Shout out to NBA Storyteller for being first. Thanks for the all day support. Subscribe for more content. It's your boy MJ. We out. And we vibe. Stop in my spaceship, no, no, no.